Philip of Gwyneth. The right reverend Bishop Waylerin by God. Please, sit down. <coughs> Thank you, right reverend. Please, call me Waylerin. I hear you've done good work at that little cell in the forest. I'm surprised you know about it. <clears throat> As bishop, I am the ex officio abbot of Kingsbridge. So, I am bound to take an interest. Well, God has blessed us in St. John. I wish God would confer similar blessings on Kingsbridge Priory. Tell me, Prior Philip, what brings you here at such a late hour? Timothy said that you will only tell me. Casually mentioned Earl or the New King. I expect you know that Stephen of Blois has claimed the throne of England. <coughs> With the blessing of the church. Already? I had heard of plans and of aspirations. This is very good. I have met Stephen. As bishop, I am much involved in politics. Of course, the church can never be involved enough. Mm. Now, how do you know of this? Ah, your brother Francis is working for Earl Robert of Gloucester, is he not? Did he tell you? Uh, I'm supposed to lie. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> no, I heard at a guest house on my way to Kingsbridge. Unfortunately, I rarely see my brother. You both must be very busy indeed. But why are you bringing up politics? Tell me, Philip, why are you here? Oh. Was I wrong to come to you, my bishop? Maybe I should have taken the letter to the Sheriff of Shiring. Eustace is ungodly, arrogant, grasping and corrupt. So are all sheriffs. Philip, how did you get this letter? I found it among Prior James's documents in Kingsbridge. I am staying there for a few days. Prior James. May he rest in peace. Did he not order everything to be burned? You know about this? Sub-Prior Remigius mentioned it once. I asked them not to burn James's books. The brothers agreed. Well, and there you found the letter? Yes. Timothy, leave us. The tension is palpable here. And did you find anything else? No, just the letter. The messenger carrying it had an accident and died near Kingsbridge. <sighs> A war would cost so, so many lives. God thunders wondrously with his voice. He does great things that we cannot comprehend. The Book of Job. But this is not the work of God, but of Earl Bartholomew. <laughs> you are truly the man I have heard so much about. I will call on friends of mine. Pray for us that we can put an end to Bartholomew's plan before it is too late. You did a brave thing for our church, Brother Philip. A brave thing indeed. <sighs> You'll go back to Kingsbridge Priory now and forget about the Sheriff, won't you? I will. And uh, 
Don't speak of this to anyone there. I shan't. That expression on his face while we're leaving. I just don't fully believe him. He's so welcoming and polite and so on. And everything, he completely subverts all of the fears that Philip had going into this, as far as I can tell, because he seems like he's just totally fine and he's not going to do, he's not going to reprimand us and he's not going to betray us and everything's going to work out exactly how we would hope. And I don't buy that. It's like he says, he's involved in politics. It seems like this is the, this is the, welcoming be demeanor he can just adopt for probably any situation. So that's unfortunate, because he even says don't talk to anyone about this, and I'm like, is he... Going. I feel like he's just going to cover it. Well, don't ask me to get going. I should leave. I still feel watched. I should get going. He's so paranoid right now. Bishop might be watching. I better stay on the path. All right, it seems like he's gonna be fully paranoid and just wants to leave now. I feel like this has to go bad. I don't buy his demeanor at all. Time to go back. You're still hungry, aren't you? Leave without feeding or do not leave before feeding the pony. We should probably feed the pony. I get the feeling that, uh, uh part of me just wants, wants to just leave though and maybe getting more food might go poorly. There's two outcomes possible, or three. One, he's just genuine, and nothing's going to go wrong. Two, uh, he plans on going after me for this, and doesn't, and, and just wants to be, this to be contained, and wants me to just stay quiet until he has a chance to go after me. Or three, he's going to just silently cover this whole thing up. I'd better feed her before we leave. Risky business. I already took some hay. Better leave the rest here. Is that my only option for feeding? Building, sunset. Beautiful. Soon it will be night. God will be my light. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Oh, there's apples. Is that a bigger risk after the hay? Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepteth thy works. Barrels of apples about to be stored for the winter. Isn't part of the Bible, isn't there an element of the Bible that involves like hospitality for guests or something, or am I imagining that part as an outsider? My pony needs to be fed soon. Should I take some? I will take just a couple. This could go so poorly. Apple. Pony. There you go. Maybe nothing will happen. Time to leave, old friend. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Very, very paranoid. Did you pack enough food? It will be a while before you get to eat smoked venison again. Yeah, yeah. I took some. Anyone seen Martha? She said she had to piss. All right. I'll uh, go get her. Uh-oh, how far did she wander You're off? You're a mason too, right? Uh-huh. 
So, what have you built so far? I'm sure Jack would love to hear about your work. Houses. <laughs> What's all your work? Mostly Houses. Rocks. I haven't built much yet. Oh, he did have more stuff to say. He was just kind, kind of weirdly pausing. Didn't know we could change characters mid-chapter. Every time I try to figure out the structure of this game, it surprises me again. Apparently. I'm supposed to find Martha, but I can't go anywhere to the right. How are you getting along? Fine. You know, you don't have to be afraid of me. I'm not afraid. I... I think I'll go and look for Tom. Oh, she's crying back here. <laughs> Probably about the mom. I mean, well, They're of course it is. I don't want to leave. It's so dangerous out there. I don't want to get robbed again. That's probably why they weren't on the road. I can say I've got a slingshot or my mother will protect you. The mom is probably more accurate, but yeah. I've got a slingshot. <laughs> Maybe you could teach me how to use it. I will. Papa usually protects me. But he can't always be around. He needs to take care of himself, too. We're more now. There will always be someone around. No, that's not true. And I want to stay here where it's safe. This knight is Charles the Great. He will protect you. Oh. Am I his princess? You are. Together, you are brave and smart, and will never give up. <laughs> All right. I have to stay steadfast. Thank you, Jack. Come on. We're going on a great quest. Listen, if you don't get back to your dad, he's going to abandon a child again. He makes a habit of it. On our way, I told Martha the names of my trees. There was the birch, Jerusalem, and the oaks, Alexandria and Byzantium. When I pointed out Rome, she laughed and named an apple tree Southampton. The farther we walked, the merrier she became, christening all the new trees Winchester, Bath, Salisbury, while I grew quieter and quieter. Oh, because she's coming up with more and more new names for all the trees, but he, he doesn't have names to call them anymore because he's leaving the, the, the place he's lived in all this time. There's some weird text formatting going on here. This one goes all the way to the edge of the box, but these ones are clearly like manually Line broken? Huh. Finally, we arrived at a large road. This heads towards Shiring, Tom said. The strangest name of them all. By noon, we had reached the edge of town. Mother gave us some dry prunes to chew while she argued with Tom whether we should head directly to town or past the palace of the so-called bishop. Tom was hopeful to find work at the palace, but Mother seemed uneasy. So we have a bit of a risk potentially, huh? You can go see the bishop, which is interestingly exactly where the other character is, Philip. Or we're gonna head towards town. So going to see the bishop, good for long-term prospects, bad for how the mom thinks about religious figures. Could give us some information as the not the not as the character, but as the player about uh, 
with how this bishop behaves necessarily. It's interesting how how much we're o overlapping paths here. I feel like if she's so uneasy, she could just be elsewhere if she wanted to. Let's try this. As we approached the building, Tom noticed the cold in Mother's eyes. Although she had agreed to accompany him to the bishop, she had remained quiet about her true feelings, while Tom didn't see it fit to ask. Gradually, the palace came into view. You can keep walking towards the palace, or you can leave and turn towards town. Why is she so icy about the the bishop's place? A servant to the Bishop of Shiring agreed to talk to Tom. He was hesitant, but not unwilling to hire a master builder for the winter. His expression changed, though, when he noticed Mother and me. I am sorry, he said, not unkindly. Maybe the Earl of Shiring will hire you. His castle is nearby, and I heard he may be in dire need of people like you. He smiled encouragingly, then sent us off, claiming his bishop had business to attend to at Kingsbridge Priory. You can see them back there too. Who's that other figure? We can see we can see the bishop and somebody else. I don't recognize the robes exactly, but maybe we should keep them in mind just in case. Whoa. We have to, our, our option here is to go straight to Earl's Gate, apparently. You don't know me. You're misjudging whatever it is I did. I'm willing to forgive your mistake if you accept my offer now. This is all about family honor to you, isn't it? Perhaps I should tell you about my mother. She was a happy person who loved to laugh and tell stories, but father made her miserable. Oh, he's not a bad man, but solemn and strict. She hated him so much she died from it. Are you saying you don't like me? You're so self-centered. You never think about anyone else's feelings. You have no refinement and you can barely read. What were you expecting? One day you will see that you are wrong. And then I won't be so forgiving. All right. Let's hope it's true when the Earl needs us. Yeah, I'm starving. Alfred, keep an eye out. I'll be right back. And boys, try to get along. An eye out for what? Papa wants him to look for things that are broken. Some people don't know they need a mason until you show them. Papa could fix their walls or build a house. One man can build an entire house? <laughs> I want to see. Learn what you can, but don't stray too far. Ugh. Why won't anyone just give me something to eat? <laughs> All he does is sit around and grumble and complain constantly. Oh, look! She has the stick now. Interesting. She's making little drawings in the snow to entertain the child. It's a decent note. Like, some people don't know they need a mason until they until they talk to one. Here's a, here's a piece of broken uh, stone right here. So this is where towns get water. A hole with stones around, Mother said. I bet Tom could build a well, too. So the bishop turned us away. The best I can hope is that he is that we don't get reported in some way. Don't know what to expect. They might have just they might have just politely turned us away, and that's the entire process, and it never comes up again. But I'm just concerned. I'm always waiting for something to go wrong in these scenarios. How do you... How do you instantly recognize these people as what they are, though? I guess she's wearing furs, but can that be that normal in a, in a place that ice is over like this? Jack, be careful. Don't get too close. 
We want you wouldn't want Jack to fall in the well. She's been to so many places and knows so much about life. She's not even amazing she's not even amazed by this place anymore. He looks a bit like Tom, but he's so different. Are all boys like him? What is it with my with mother? She seems different. She's less and more grumpy at the same time. Stay sharp, Jack. People are rarely what they seem. See that knight over there? What does he look like to you? A small bear or a duck? What? Okay. Sure. He looks like a small bear. <laughs> True. But even small bears can have an appetite for blood. Just because we are out of the forest, that doesn't mean there are no wolves about. Hello, Jack. Have you ever been to a castle before? No. Castles are very safe places. People don't rob you so fast. Hmm. Mother told me stories about castles, about knights and princesses. Oh, like what? Like the one about Tristan and Isolde. They drank a potion and had to love each other for three years. I know that one. Jack, do you think there's a princess in this castle? It would be so nice to see a real princess one day. This poor little girl has traveled the road so long that her primary way of measuring places seems to be how often you'll get robbed at them. <laughs> hey, boy, come here. Say, what do you think about Tom? He's big. Well, let me tell you something. He may seem nice, but he really doesn't care about anyone but himself. Whatever you do, he doesn't care. He'll just drag you into his own misery. So take my advice. If you and your mother want to stay, you better learn to shut up and put yourself second. That's all I'm saying. Damn. Alfred thinks Tom doesn't care about him. Brutal. Yeah, I was gonna say that seems like the warped perspective of a... well, of a son, basically. Like, yeah, he's a selfish person that puts every, that always puts himself before everybody else. It's like, well, you're a teenager as far as I can tell. And you've got so many emotions that are misguided usually. And you're going to always be so frustrated with a father figure when you're trying to become your own person and stuff like that. That you may not have the best ideas. So I'm going to take this thing about you not your er, dad not caring about you. I'm going to throw it down the well. No, I don't think that works. Alfred thinks Tom doesn't listen to anyone. He should tell him then. But how can he, if Tom won't listen? Well, if Alfred is angry at his father, he must make him listen. That little rat. If you keep your feelings secret, Alfred, nothing will change. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell everybody. Alfred doesn't like your father. What? Oh, maybe if Papa knew that, he could do something about it. He doesn't talk to Alfred that much. Now I'm gonna click on you with it. Just really confuse this. You should talk to your father. Why would I? <laughs> I'm fine. I just wanted to be nice and warn you. That's all. He's so resigned to the permanent fixture of not liking his father. Oh boy. Leave the Earl allowed his daughter to refuse him. No scandalous. Well, William Hamley is an idiot. I wouldn't marry him either. She deserves someone better. Such a very bright and charming girl. No, she's an arrogant one. Just like her father. Don't say that. It's not arrogance. It's nobility. You have to be like that if you want people to respect you. I agree. She will do fine. It's the Earl's son I'm more worried about. To think that coward is set to be next in line. At least he knows how to order people around. Right. What a brat. I can't help it. When people start talking, I always want to just stand still and wait for it to pass. Just to see if anything interesting happens. This is a really cool camera angle. Uh, definitely the kind of thing that, could, like, if it's not, if they're not careful about it, it could really, like, interfere through your ability to play the game if they get too showy with it. But this seems to be existing because it's actually, like, a... 
Yeah, it's a, it's a uh, choose which direction you want to go map. Like, we were here. I can go up the wall, or I can go across the yard, and maybe even elsewhere. So they take this moment to show us this place that, where that's actually like an alternate camera angle that effectively sets the scene. This is the setting we're at. This is how it's guarded. This is how... This is its scale compared to where we are. It's actually a pretty good idea, because in adventure games, you almost always have the exact same camera angle all the time. That vaguely side-scrolling uh, angle that's like roughly level with your character, and your character's always the same size on the screen, and so on. Like, I've played enough that they'd always just look like it's that angle all the time. The Monkey Island camera angle and whatnot, so... Having a little shot like this actually really helps. I want to look at the wall. I've never been to a castle. Oh, I'm just right up here. I feel like I can get in trouble for being up here. Let's keep going. Is that a castle? I thought it would be much, uh, would look much, uh, more like our cave. Not like a huge pile of rocks. Kind of is a giant pile of rocks, yeah. Now I'm behind this wall. Oh, I can keep going. I'm inside the gatehouse now. Can I go talk to this guard? Look at this guard over here. Hi, I'm a tiny little boy. Do you care about me? No? Okay, bye. Let's talk. Look at this knight up here. Is this, oh, is this the one that she said looked like a bear? I thought they were talking about the one in the background, but he's probably the one that looks like a bear. He has hair like me. Did he live in a forest as well? What is it, boy? You just want to stand there and stare? Alright then, let's see what you've got. Nope. We're just going to sit here and stare, apparently. We're doing a staring contest. You're good. Could kill a boar with that stare. Pierce it like an arrow. Ever tried that, boy? Stare a boar to death? No, but I can kill a deer with a rock. <laughs> you know what had happened to a boar? You claimed he'd killed a deer. Only the king is allowed to, right? Aye, or the queen for that matter. Whoever has their arse on the bloody throne end of summer. Used to be that anyone could hunt, but these are proper times now. Decent and orderly. <clears throat> At least when it comes to butchering deer, that is. Is it only deer? Is that the only thing you're not allowed to hunt unless you're the king? Interesting. Probably shouldn't ask, are you a knight? That seems like a trap. Like almost you'd get like you'd get in trouble for being an outsider, but I don't know if anyone Seems like that seems to be something that matters, but also this kid's oblivious, so who knows? Will you be fighting soon? Why are you asking? All right, let me tell you a secret. Can you keep a secret? What color is your shite boy? Brown. Nice. Mine's gray, like ash. But that's a secret, isn't it? For my shite's color is neither your nor anyone else's business. So you'd better keep that to yourself. Got it? Hmm. Are you a knight? I'll be damned if I wasn't. Would have risked my life for nothing if all I was supposed to do was bake bread. Be warned, lad. Get a job that pays. Not one where you have to pay for a new horse every time someone kicks your ass. Being a knight costs you, especially when you're also a drunkard. Damn, if only I'd known. Huh. What a strange boy. Uh, I didn't do anything that strangely, did I? Hey, my friends. <laughs> they wouldn't know. Oh, I was just curious. Mother said I should be careful with the sling, because it's supposed to be a secret. You get in trouble for hunting deer, apparently. Well, now where I've ended up. I suppose the other side of the keep. Yeah? Even this much later, the atmosphere is still thick as butter. <laughs> 